Welcome to the Young Folk Knits podcast. My name is Casey and I'm Becky. I'm Casey's me ma. <laughs> She's back. We know y'all missed her. <laughs> so I'm um, trying to get her back for every episode now is my plan. <laughs> but um, if you're new here, you can find me on Instagram under young folk knit dot sorry young folk dot knits and on Ravelry at Casey Apple. And you want to tell them your word? Um, you can find me on Instagram at a hand knit letter. I don't know if there's dots between it, but I think so. Yeah, try it out. <laughs> there's some dots in there. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'll tag her on the post in Instagram. I'll put it up here so yeah. you guys can see it. But um, Becky was on the last episode and we were really excited because we announced that we're going to be hosting a knit along yeah. for the Humla Bee Shawl by um, Lerica from Fiber Tales. And I was so excited because I think a lot of people yeah. are wanting to knit it with us. It's going to be fun. <laughs> so just a reminder that is going to start the first day of January and run through the end of March and you can use any yarn you want um we'll talk about more about that in a little bit but uh we're, we're really excited for sure about that and uh, we wanted to show you some stuff we've been working on so let's start with what we're wearing okay i'm actually not wearing anything i knit today but becky is so <laughs> i'll <laughs> let her tell you about it okay i'm ma i'm wearing the um Pure Joy, is it Pure Joy? Mm -hmm. Pure Joy by Hoagie Locatelli. And um, this was a super fun knit. I really enjoyed it. Um, it really was joy yeah. <laughs> to knit. I will it's knit fun. another one for sure. Um, and it's knit out of um, some Woolly, Mar Woolly, Mar <laughs> <laughs> Woolly Mammoth Fiber Company. Yeah. Um, and it's a special skein that Casey gave to me. And so I wanted to use that and something special. And then I have it with, oddly enough, a, a Hobby Lobby <laughs> yarn that's hand dyed. It's really pretty. But um, it's pretty. It's um, I think it's a slate colorway. Soft. It's very, very soft. I, I enjoyed it. It's a little bit splitty. I mean, it's not, the quality is not the same as um, like indie dyed merino. It's supposed to be merino. Is it singles or is it plied? I think it's plied. Yeah, it's plied. Yeah, it's plied. Maybe just like a two ply. Maybe who knows? But it's um, it's split just a little bit, and there I want to say I had an, a tie, like a tied on end, mm -hmm. which I didn't love. But other than that, I you know for I think it was like fourteen ninety nine for the hank and um then i used the hobby lobby 50 percent off they don't coupon. have that anymore did you know that they don't have a coupon no they don't do the coupon anymore they just have it where or no no they have the coupon they did before have it where you like have one item 40 percent off right they don't do the coupon anymore now they you don't. just have to go on the week that the, the yarns on, on yeah. sale <laughs> well, every other week right? right i suppose i i, I did good buying it then mm -hmm. <laughs> so it was like seven dollars and so um for seven dollars, I think it's a good yarn. Love it. But um, it's like I said, you can tell it's not the same kind of quality as other, you know. You can't dyed. tell from looking at it. But it's really but pretty. Knitting, but knitted up, it's very nice. It's very beautiful. I, I thought it was beautiful in yeah. the hang. It, it yeah. just looks really pretty. This is, I don't know if I said it, but this is the color slate. Okay. <laughs> Continue. Continue. <laughs> Sorry about that. We had to break for a moment. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I enjoyed it. It was really nice. It was, and it's nice to wear too. It's easily it's easy to wear I knit a pure joy for my mom uh, for her anniversary present one year and I did um, a Madeline Tosh color actually they were both Madeline Tosh uh, a blue like a blue it looked a lot like the sample that mm -hmm. she knit except for the um, kind of the speckled one was it was mainly blues as the speckles but I really liked it a lot mm -hmm. and Becky gave me a Madeline Tosh skein of my favorite, my absolute favorite Madeline Tosh color. Um, cop, is it called pink cop, copper? Copper pink, I think. Pink. Yeah, so it's my favorite. And I want to use it for, I want to make myself one. And I want to use it for this section. And then I want to use my skein of um, Woolly Mammoth nice. <laughs> for this section, I That'll think. Be beautiful. I think it would be cute together. But I'm, I, so I don't know. I know for sure I want to use the copper pink on this part mm -hmm. and I'm just not sure yet right. but this 
Um, this softened up. So this is her yeah. sock yarn. It this was from a few years ago. Right. But it softened up. Yeah, it did considerably. It has its nylon on free mm -hmm. and it's BFL and something. Maybe Gotland. Yeah, but it feels yeah. good. It feels or good. Or it. Is that how you say it? I don't know. It's something but I like think that. it might be that though. <laughs> yeah, I think it might be the BFL and Chevy Ot, Chevy it, Chevy it. How <laughs> you say it? But um, it, it was her one, like a one of a kind because a lot of times she'll dye colors in um, like like her peony and then she'll use the exhaust and they'll be you know one of a kind right, uh, color names that she does so that is is that all your hand is that's that it yep okay let's go to finished objects do you have any finished objects i do do you i only have i guess i'll go ahead and yeah, tell you guys about these mine are boring <laughs> they are <laughs> um, you're just still on the hat train, aren't I you? Am. Okay, so my finished objects are actually crochet. <laughs> They're not knit. I, um, um, as, as you can tell, we're podcasting from a different room today. Um, I repainted and I've been working kind of on redecorating my bedroom. And I wanted to knit some, or crochet, some mug rugs <laughs> or coasters because... I didn't, I always have tea at night and I didn't want to set it, you know, mm -hmm. but I wanted them to be cute. So right. I wanted to make some. So this was a free pattern. Um, I'll have to put it on here, uh, who the designer was, but it, I searched on, I searched for mug rugs <laughs> or coaster on Ravelry and these came up. It is crochet and it's a worsted weight. Do you want me and, to hold them? Some? Sure. Or two of them and you can show. And whoops. And there's actually four in the set, but I only did three because I didn't like the fourth pattern as much, but I still liked it. I would have done it, but honestly, I was so tired <laughs> of making it. Crochet hurts my hands a lot. Mm. And this is not wool. This is Knit Picks Dishy, so it's cotton. That does not stretch. <laughs> it doesn't stretch at all. And you use a 3.5 millimeter um, crochet hook mm -hmm. because this so this is tapestry crochet and I don't think I've ever done tapestry crochet I haven't so I actually started crocheting before I started knitting mm -hmm. when I was a little girl I learned how to right. crochet when I was like eight and I did like I remember making little granny square baby blankets uh -huh. and scarves you know and uh, I, I loved it and there was a couple of older ladies that were like grandmas to me <laughs> and they taught me how to do it Sweet. and it was fun so i crocheted for a while but i feel like i would i never took the crochet to the next level mm -hmm. because i see all these really cute crochet patterns for garments sweaters mm -hmm. and i was like a hat right. that's what i did i just made hats <laughs> top yeah. of crochet a couple times i made toys and stuff but so I never did anything. I never pushed it much <laughs> with the crochet, but so with tapestry crochet, you hold, you use a small needle and you hold both of them. And as you can, you can kind of see it runs, it runs along the back and it makes it extra thick mm -hmm. and it's hidden because you knit through the back loop only, but it's two strands, you know, it's like one strand wrapped in crochet basically. Um, <laughs> And this one, I accidentally cut it before I tied it. Oh, <laughs> it's totally off. These look better. Um, the the tassels. But yeah, I thought they were fun. They would be a, a fun cute. gift too. They would be a fun gift, like for a housewarming present yeah. or mm -hmm. or something like that. Yeah, that's my only finished object though. <laughs> so um, I would, I do really like the knit picks dishy though. This is the first time I've used it. But you can also get that like peaches and peaches and cream, cream at yeah. Walmart for like a dollar. Mm -hmm. And I got some of that. I mean, talk about a inexpensive frugal gift if you wanted to. True. <laughs> you know. True. I, that's a good option. That would be good. All right. Let's see what okay. you've been making. Like I said, mine is boring because it's like this. It's like the same <laughs> thing. It's like my record is skipping. <laughs> so I've got um, a whole bunch of Hill oh, 60 hats. Um, I really remember that I started a hat factory <laughs> and um, the boss is super mean and does not let me off and so um, 
but pretty soon I will get to quit because I only got two two more hats to go and then the hat factory closes. And then you're never going to make another hat again in your life. <laughs> Until I start one. <laughs> Until the next one. Um, but this is Hill 60. This is the child size. These are for my, my um, two of my nephews. And then this is for... Um, He's like a nephew, but he's actually my cousin. But this is for my cousin. And then I've got two more to go. And these two are um, Malabrigo Rios. This is Ivy. This is Bobby Blue. And this is Barocco Vintage Worsted. And this is the color Cracked Pepper. And um, this is a super inexpensive hat. Yeah. Because this was $9. To make this hat and um feels good feels feels how nice that feels yeah i mean it's got acrylic in it um did you have did you use all of it no i have like i have this much <laughs> left. <laughs> that much i have that much left um i did not use all of it and um so yeah it was it was fast it was nice yeah. it's not scratchy and i chose this for him because i don't think he's gonna hand wash it like ever so um I think it's I like it a lot. I think that one. color is such a um it's like also the type of color that you could go to a nice store and buy a bean right. that you like because it goes with everything. Right. I really like so it. So that's what I've got. <laughs> that's the only finished thing I've got right now. But I, I have been it. working on a few other things. That's but... not a thing, that's three yeah. things. <laughs> okay. So let's set it there. I guess we can talk about our works in progress then. Yeah. Let's do it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I basically have one <laughs> work in progress that, well, I have a couple, but this is what I've been working on. I have not got to knit a lot lately. I don't know what it is, but December, we're trying to finish up school for, so that the kids can have a little bit of a break. Mm -hmm. it's, it's just felt so busy. Plus yeah. I've been painting mm -hmm. <laughs> furniture and I just feel like I've had zero time to knit. Mm -hmm. But um, we got a lot done in zero time. <laughs> no, I haven't. I should be done with this. <laughs> but um, so this is my Strya cardigan by Andrea Mowry, and I am knitting this for the Insta Friends knit along. And I'm using ampersand fibers yarn, and you can buy that at La Mercerie. Um, I think that's the only place you can get it. It's like their house yarn. I'm using the colors Pompadour 02. Um, that's the that's main this, color? That's my main color. Then I'm using Azurite, Ochre 02, Oat 01, Vermilion 02. Is that all four? <laughs> yeah. So I finished the body and the pattern calls for you to knit like eight and a half inches or eight inches, something like that from the... Um, underarm and I knit longer than that because I'm five eight yeah and I feel like I'm tall mm -hmm. and I have a I just feel like things are always a little bit short yeah. on me so I wanted it to be longer and I do think that it I have read multiple comments that it grows lengthwise oh. when you block it so that, hopefully the, I didn't the overdo pattern it. pattern or this particular yarn? This pattern. Oh, okay. Yes because it's the half fisherman's rib and it apparently from all the testers i saw it grew quite a bit lengthwise mm -hmm. um i'm making the size five and i did so then i did the rib the bottom hem the ribbing and i actually you're supposed to knit that one and a half inches but i feel like it didn't look i wanted it to be a little bit longer so i did it one in 1.75 inches and then I cast off with that lovely tubular cast on, the sewn <laughs> one, which I hate, but it looks so good. Um, it just takes me literally like a whole day to do it. Yeah. <laughs> so Andrea Mowry in her pattern, she has you do this step where you like slip and move the yarn around. And then you slip your purl stitches to one needle. Yeah, I've seen that. You knit mm -hmm. to one and then you do like Kitchener stitch. Right. But I learned to do tubular bind off a different way um there's a video that i can link in the description but the way i was always taught to do it um was to you leave it all on one needle and you get your you know you, you get yarn that's like three to four times the length of your um what you're going to be binding off 
and you do like these five or six steps <laughs> that you're sewing you know it's even more intricate than kitchener but once you've got it memorized it just it's, goes. It just goes. So it's not that difficult to memorize. You just have to maybe watch the video a few times. I have never done a tubular bind on yeah. or a tubular cast on. Well, you know, it makes the it makes the it edge kind of look like it just rolls yeah. over. Really and I will say this: it looks better once you've blocked it. It looks yeah. it doesn't look as good until you block it. But yeah. Um. But I like. I don't know. I like that better because I don't always have two needles that close in size mm -hmm. or the same size. So for me, a lot of times it's easier to just keep it all on one needle and do it that way. Um, I've been knitting for like 10 years and I didn't even know that you can do it the other way until Andrea Mowry. <laughs> but yeah. you know, I've, I've done, she has you do that. I know I did it for the weekender maybe on the sleeves. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to remember. I've done it that way before, but I prefer Mm -hmm. to do it this way so then I was at the point where you know I have to either do the sleeves or the button bands and if you follow me on Instagram <laughs> I did post you know like what should I do but I have basically already made up my mind to do the button band <laughs> so I am um, I went with that because once I get to the sleeves when I do the sleeves I'm pretty much I get my fill of a sweater and I'm done with it mm -hmm. I don't want to work on on it anymore and I want to know I get I don't like working on sleeves so I want to know that after I do that I'm done yeah sorry our kids are very loud <laughs> they're having a good time though they're not dying um but I decided to go ahead and do the button band and I had to change I put all this in my Ravelry notes so if you follow me on Ravelry you can read that because I made the body longer my um I had to pick up a different amount of stitches because you know than what oh, she calls for the, for, for the button band because my body was longer and then she tells you like where to place your first buttonhole and how many stitches between each buttonhole so, you had so I had to change that because it was seven and I went from seven to nine mm -hmm. between each um, each buttonhole, but I still only did six. I think it, I think it's gonna be good. I'm excited. You still did six buttons. I still did six buttons. Okay. Yeah. So, so I didn't make it that you know massively right. much longer, but I really like it. I'm excited. I love it. I think it's beautiful. I think it's gonna be fun to to it's wear. A super pretty sweater. So I still need to. I've got until the end of December to the last day of December. The end of the year is the end of that knit along. So I've only got a few more rows on the button bands, and then I'll have to do it. <laughs> I'm gonna try to do that tonight, maybe tomorrow. This weekend, I want to have that completely done, and I want to have been started on a sleeve. And I mean, that should give me plenty of time if I just focus. <laughs> you can do it. I believe in you. <sighs> I don't know about you, but if you're kind of if you're starting on a you start on a sweater and you're real excited about it mm -hmm. and you kind of make progress and then you kind of wane off because it starts getting old and you're not working right. on it as much and it doesn't grow as fast yes. too because like at the beginning you're like look at it go yes. look at it go and then once you have tons of stitches yes. you're like it's not going anywhere well i don't know if you ever do this but i will like start setting goals mm -hmm. like okay by this date i want to have this done yeah if i'm getting behind if i'm you know slow down do you ever do that <laughs> Okay. Yeah, I do. I do. And that helps sometimes if I stop. I'm like, okay, this, I need to do this many rows mm -hmm. each day. Mm -hmm. Or like today, I need to get to this point. Or on this date, I need to be at this point. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that helps keep me right. a little bit more on track. But yeah, I get tired of working on the same thing after a while. I can understand. <laughs> You've been working on a sweater too. I have. You? I have. Off and on, I've... I've been working on it. This is, um, let me get it off oh, here. I love that color. <laughs> it, this is, this Such is, um, the Waves of Change jacket by Denise Bayron. I love it. And it's in, it's Lion Brand, Hue and Me, in the color Arrowwood. And I have got, um, I just have to do the sleeves and the button bands on this. And so I'm supposed to keep this attached I just bound off on the hem and then I'm gonna go up the side oh, here really? pick up the button band and then she wants to go down this other side oh, okay. um, I will say that this pattern is probably the best organized pattern written pattern 
I have ever went through. And um, maybe it's it could just be the way her brain and my brain work, where I just totally yeah. understand. You know, sometimes some people get things. You say it a certain way to someone, and mm -hmm. then they that like oh yes. clicks, and maybe that's just the thing with her and and me. But um, it's she's got the detail in it is so nice. She's got little yeah. boxes that you can check off that's when you've awesome. completed. So, like if you completed that, you can check it off. Makes you feel and, good. And it does. And I'm just like, oh, I love that. And I'm like, check. <laughs> and so it was really nice. And then she's got like little subheadings and little, I mean, it's just really well done. Really well done. So I am excited to make more of her patterns because mm -hmm. I thought it was just excellent. Anyway, so this is the Waves of Change. And I did not, I admitted she has every 10 rows in the pattern, you're supposed to have a pearl, um, a pearl row, and it makes these waves, like they go down it. Um, I knew I didn't want that for this one. I think for the next one I'm gonna do that, because yeah. I just, I am gonna make another one out of a wool. I'm gonna use that um, it's Barrett Wool Co. And it is, she, it, um, that company has really cool marls, and I'm gonna do a black and white marl, and I think it'll be really cool, especially with the pearls, yeah. I think it'll be neat. Anyway, um, so yeah, and uh, I love it because it reminds me when, <laughs> way back in the 1980s <laughs> when I was a, a small girl, um, we got this enormous, hideous sweater at a thrift store, but it was heavy and thick. And, the, and like everyone took turns wearing it in the family. Even like, <laughs> yeah. I like wore it and it was probably 10 sizes too big for me as a little girl. And um, we passed it around the family and you felt like, like a magnificent buffalo <laughs> when you wore that thing. You just felt like this, like this glorious beast in the field. <laughs> Did it have color work on it? No, well, no, it didn't have color work, but it was this color. It was this color. And the thickness is the same. Yeah. So they, this pattern is nothing like that pattern, but the the weight and the color and the feel <laughs> is the same. And so we called that sweater Tatanka, which which, is, <laughs> which means buffalo. I think in I think in Lakota, it might be in another um, indigenous language too. But but that means buffalo. And so we call the sweater Tatanka. So this is the next iteration there you go. to Tatanka. Yeah, to name that sweater. So yeah, and it's um it's gonna be big on me, which I did make it. Two sizes too big oh, on yeah. purpose, but um, I'll take this off. Can we hold it for you? Yeah. So it's big, but it's gonna be perfect. It looks good. I'm gonna love it. It's gonna be. I want it to be. Um, oh, it has the snaps, doesn't it? Has it? Snap okay. and it lays over like the button band will be here, mm -hmm. but you won't have two two widths of the button band. Yeah. So it lays over it. But I just thought this is gonna be. This is my Tatanka. It's gonna be so warm. <laughs> it's gonna be fun. I love it. It's like a jacket. It is a jacket. Yeah. Then, oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, it is a jacket. So it's thick and warm, and mm -hmm. especially in Arkansas, it doesn't get insanely cold yeah. very often. Like we do have some bone chilling days, but not often. So this will be perfect. I really like it a lot. And I can wear a sweater under it even because it's not oh, gonna yeah. be tight. This so, is one of my all time favorite colors. So I'm excited. It's so pretty. Thanks. And I like that it has, like, I feel like this yeah. is going to stand up. It will, yeah. It I just got it crunched under my hair, but yeah. What's it called? I don't know. <laughs> it has stand upness. It does. It stands up. <laughs> so it's nice. So I'm, I'm really pleased with this pattern. And the next pattern I'm going to make from her is the Grace Pullover. I have, oh, you sent me the picture of that. Yeah. Oh, it's a pretty. really, really cute sweater. Anyway, what's her name again? Denise Bayron. Yeah, I'm gonna have to look at some of those patterns. I really like that. Well, speaking of the way patterns are written, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the other thing that I have been working on. Okay. Um, look at my little bag. That's so It has cute. a bee on it. So I think this is what I'm gonna put my um, yes. Humble Bee shawl in whenever yeah. we start knitting on that because it has a bee. Okay, so my youngest favorite color is red, and I got her some yarn. For, oh, look at this, I got this too. So I got this bag at Hobby Lobby, um, and I got this ruler too. It has a V on it. I love it. <laughs> I love that you're like doing all the theme, which I'm gonna do a, my Audible book, my Audible book for the month, of, or oh, yeah. two months that we're gonna be knitting that is gonna be, um, 
It's called The Beekeeper's Apprentice. It's oh. about Sherlock Holmes' assistant. That's going to be a girl. cool. Yeah. I need so to if you guys want to read that with I us or to listen to it, because I'm going to listen to yeah, it. Yeah, I need to listen to it too. <laughs> but it's supposed to be um, a mystery. That sounds good. I love Sherlock Holmes. It is Holmes. a mystery. Not supposed to be. It is. Yeah. I do too. When I was a kid, um, and when I would go to bed at night, my mom and dad would always play different um like I had a cassette player or a CD player mm -hmm. and I would always listen to different things. And um, one of the things that I listened to was um my mom got me a box set of all the Sherlock Holmes stories on C D. I think I think that CDs were, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> big at the times. I mean I still it, I still had cassettes, but I'm thinking that one was on C D and I would listen to them right every night when I was I went through a, a phase where I would listen to those. So I, it, it's like nostalgic. <laughs> Cool Holmes. <laughs> but um what was I gonna say about this oh they have a bunch of That's this adorable. thing right here like they have another bag did it come with the um, bag or no. just it was near it so it was like yeah a and I wasn't even in there for anything like this I went because I wanted to get a throw pillow <laughs> and I walked by and I saw they, they had some cups they had uh, mugs and tumblers that were knitting and like being oh. creative. And uh -huh. there's all kinds of different knitting tools that they have with all this right now. But I thought, well, yeah, I need That's that. So, so anyway, <laughs> my youngest favorite color is red and I had got some yarn from Lamb Co. Yarns, <laughs> I think is what it's called. And this is the color, something like Brick Road or Brick something. Um, but I am making the pattern by, by Petite Knit. It's a teddy bear sweater. Um, and it calls for fingering and lace weight, like mohair. Mm -hmm. I am allergic to mohair. I can't even knit with it. And I assume that my kids <laughs> probably couldn't wear it. <laughs> kids itch factor is through yeah. the roof. I mean, even things... I don't think they can handle it. And I can I couldn't knit it anyway. Mm -hmm. So I got this DK weight super wash because it's for... A child I think I'm you know I don't want to no. I don't know I want to be able to wash it if I need to so feel how soft that is oh that's nice and she's super knit worthy like she'll wear she loves it so um I am knitting a size up for her because I think that she'll be able to wear it for many years and I'm gonna make it um, just roll the sleeves up and she can wear it this winter because this winter I feel like is almost over yes. <laughs> so anyway talking about patterns oh I, I feel like many of you have probably knit a petite knits pattern um, I've been knitting for 10 years <laughs> and I've made many sweaters <laughs> and I've done a lot of techniques so I feel comfortable doing it, but if you, it's the type of pattern that it expects you to just know no. how to do certain mm -hmm. things. Like it's not step-by-step -step instructions. Um, you know, even with the um, short rows, mm -hmm. it doesn't give you much information no. <laughs> about it at all, uh, which is fine for me, but I feel like a newer knitter, you would probably wouldn't want to knit this as your first sweater mm -hmm. pattern. <laughs> and um, also the increases, like the way it was all written out. Um, like you, it's fine if you've done a few sweaters, but mm -hmm. if you haven't, it's not, it leaves a lot of it up to you to kind of know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it, it, expect, it expects you to know what you're doing. But I think this is gonna be cute. I'm not gonna do the embroidery of the teddy bear on the front. I just really liked the shaping. shaping. So I'm excited to get that done. She'll love it. And what else? I think I'm trying to think if I even have any more whips. What else are you working on? I'm working on my last, well, second to last hat. Let's see here. I'm gonna make, um, I am making a, I forgot the name of it. Something with the G. Graham. Graham. I'm making a Graham hat for my sister. And um, she picked out this yarn. It is Malabrigo Rios in the color Chris. And I, I guess I was going to say Jenner. Because <laughs> it's K-R-I-S. But um, so this is Malabrigo. 
Chris and I'm making the gram and it, I brought my gram to show you what it looks like. This is a free pattern on Ravelry and it is a nice, um, uh, it's like seed stitch or moss stitch. Yeah. And it's, um, a gender neutral hat that pretty much anyone can wear. And I really like the way that this one knit up and the way it looks, mm -hmm. looks on. And, um, so she saw this and she wanted a gram too. So I'm making that for her. And this is in Madeline Tosh vintage in the color Norway spruce. And I have to say, this is probably my favorite color. I love it. I think it's really pretty. I love pretty. this color. It's such a mm -hmm. dark, I don't know if it comes across on camera, but it's like the deepest teal that you can get. Yeah. And so I really, really like that. Anyway, it looks good on you too. Yeah, it looks nice. And so I'm going to make that for her. And then I got one more hat and then I quit. <laughs> you cast it on yet? Not yet. No. Because I only have one, I only have one 16 inch cable. Yeah. So. Well, you can only work do one at a time. time so. Okay. So in a previous episode, I had talked about the fact that I wanted to do, I have leftover sh uh, shelter, uh, Brooklyn Tweed shelter mm -hmm. from my weekender sweater mm -hmm. in the color Hayloft. And I <laughs> made no progress at all. Um, but I was going to make the skiff hat by okay. Jared Flood. I think, I think Jared Flood, it's Brooklyn Tweed anyway. Mm -hmm. Um, so then I was kind of worried that it's too big. I've gone down a needle size. And then Andrea Mallory released her latest pattern, oh, which is the new yeah. worsted Harlow hat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'm, I'm trying to decide, should I just go ahead and rip this out? Cause I made no progress on it and use this instead mm -hmm. for the Harlow hat. Or keep going with the skip hat. I don't know. Which one makes you happier when you look at it? I don't it? know. <laughs> I feel like I can't even think about it right now because you I've got so much stuff. I don't know. How does this look on me though? Does it like blend in with my hair? No, looks good. It, are you sure? I love it doesn't it. look like the same color as no, my hair. No, because your hair is darker up here. I okay. mean, if this was like the lighter bit, I would say probably yeah. not the best, but got that ombre going and it looks good. Okay. Well, I like the color, so maybe I'll get that <laughs> done it. So I'll just make a decision at some okay. point. Good. So is that all that we're working on? That's it. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about acquisitions okay. and then we and our knit along. Okay. Too. Nice. So Jessica McDonald also just released a book um, with children's patterns. She makes, I mean, she makes most beautiful designs, but I'm excited because one of those is coming and I want to make, I'm going to make a sweater for like each, I want to make something for each of the kids out of that book. So I'm really excited for, nice. for that to come. But do you have any acquisitions? I don't because okay. I am saving up my yarn money because I actually get to go to a real live in-person yarn store next ah, week that's exciting. <laughs> so i'm really excited about that because like we said before there's nothing around us at all mm -hmm. and um i haven't been to a yarn store since 2018 maybe <laughs> me neither <laughs> and so i am so excited and so um, we're going to go to um, my husband and my boys and i we're going to go on a little getaway next weekend to the smoky mountains and there's um one in gatlinburg called Smoky Mountain Spinnery. So I hope, I'm hope i hoping to go there and I'm you need to take saving up my little, <laughs> my little money. Um, I will take some pictures. Yeah, that would be fun. Maybe some little, some video or yeah. something. Yeah. Um, you, I hope you see snow because we're not seeing any here. Yeah. It's like 80, well, it's not 80 degrees today, but yeah. it's hot. It's I want to see a bear. Muggy. Oh yeah, that'd be fun. I want to see a bear. I bet you will. Because I am obsessed with seeing animals <laughs> in the wild. It makes my day like yesterday. <laughs> My son and I took a walk, and which I see them quite a bit, but there was this massive um, heron that oh, was flew right above us, and it was not far from us at all. Yeah. And its wingspan was, I don't know, like seven feet awesome. maybe. And his legs were like really long, and I just like tears welled up <laughs> in my eyes, and I was just like, thank so you for beautiful. letting me see you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we actually have bears. Yeah. Here. Have you seen one though? I have. Really? I saw and we've got them on our game cameras. Really? My dad, um, my dad likes to hunt mm -hmm. and he has game cameras set up at his little hooch. Right. <laughs> at his spot. Is that a bad word? <laughs> <laughs> I 
mad about that? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, he always calls it that. I don't know what it means. Um, anyway, his game camera picked up three bears. Oh, how cool. Three bears climbing up into him. But when I lived where my parents did before, um, we would see this big black bear going back and forth. See, I've never seen all this the bear. And, I, and um, there's an older lady that lives close to us that um, has seen them several times. Yeah, but she gets up really early and she's quiet. So <laughs> doesn't happen at my house. Like, ah. <laughs> so it doesn't happen at my house, but um, I've seen, I've like heard a mountain lion several oh, yeah. times. And then I saw big traps in my garden um, mm. one time. Um, but I've never seen a bear. Yeah, we have all But that would just make my year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll call you next time and be like, okay. hurry up. Come here. <laughs> um, you see this mountain right here. Yeah. They come down off that mountain mm -hmm. and but we also my father in law who lives right here, you know, mm -hmm. he has gotten multiple mountain lines on his mm -hmm. game cameras as see, well. I want one just I don't hunt, my husband yeah. doesn't hunt, but I want one just to like spy yeah, on nature. It's fun. Mm -hmm. You can kind of see what coming around your garden too. I know. <laughs> like what is eating my vegetables? It's rabbits <laughs> is what it is. Yeah, Becky doesn't like Peter Rabbit at all. I don't. I don't. I used to think that Mr. McGregor was a bad guy, but that's not the case. You, you bonded with Mr. <laughs> McGregor over here. <laughs> Becky always has the best garden. Best garden. And Apparently it's the most tasty rabbits. garden, rabbits. according to the rabbits. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, well, I want to show you guys one last thing, which I was, Becky knows, I was very excited about. So, I got this a while, I mean, it's been a little bit ago, this Spin Cycle Dreams, Dream State. It's the worsted weight, and it's, how would you say that? Wololo? Wololo, yeah. I don't know. It's W-O-L, it's W-O-L-O-L-O, -L -O -L -O. <laughs> and I really liked the color the colors in it because I feel like it's more muted, you know, and some of their, some of their, I, I like a lot of their colors, but I don't like parts of mm -hmm. a lot of their colors, but I like pretty much all of this. So yeah, I like it too. I want, I knew I wanted to make the spark cardigan. And what's funny is I saw, you know, everybody was making it because it was a, a Rhinebeck sweater mm -hmm. one year. I was like, Oh, I don't really like that. That's that much. I don't really want to make it. And I had, it wasn't on my radar. I mean, I didn't think it was ugly. It just wasn't mm -hmm. something I thought I wanted to spend my time making. Right. And then I saw a version of it and the colors on it. I was just like, oh my goodness, I love that. And so then I went, <laughs> then, you know, once it hits mm -hmm. that you like something, then you just yeah. like, got to make it. Right. So I got this color and then I was trying to find a similar color I wanted to use for my main color. And... Um, Magpie Fibers had a Black Friday sale early. Mm -hmm. It was like the, like the very beginning of November. Mm -hmm. And their Nest Worsted was on sale. And so I asked my husband, I was like, can we, can we splurge? Can I get a sweater quantity of this? It's 20% off. And he's like, no, we can't really afford it right now. Because we, um, anyway, this is the Twilight Honey color, by the way. And I was like, oh, I was so devastated, you know. So then, like a month later, I get a package, comes in, and he had got this for me. Aww. So he surprised me with it. Um, he always does that. He's always like, no, no. That's the best, though. And <laughs> Do that in the middle. Yeah, so I was super excited. Like, what, I mean, what knitter wouldn't have just, like, almost oh, passed yeah. out? Get I was surprised. super excited. That, yeah. Super excited. And, um... Anyway, I really love the color. So I think it's gonna go well together because I didn't want, I don't want the all over color work of the Spark Cardigan to just be super, con, like super high contrast. Mm -hmm. I wanted it to be a little bit more muted mm -hmm. because I like that look better for something that mm -hmm. I'm gonna wear in these colors. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I think that, that that's gonna, I think this will do the trick. I think it will blend well together. So I'm really excited. I think it's beautiful. I'm really excited for that. Yeah. And I watched, if you watch Naughty Pine um, Bobbers, I think it's Naughty Pine Bobbers. Her name's Kayla. It's Naughty Pine. 
<laughs> something but mm -hmm. she does a podcast too and she's she hasn't made a whole lot of videos recently she's doing a blog this right mm -hmm. now but she made this cardigan and she has that whole episode so i went back and watched it i saw i saw that it was <laughs> yeah, beautiful hers was really pretty i loved it and i love the way it looked on her and you steak it so that's i'm not i'm trying to think if i've steaked anything before i don't think i have so that's gonna be a totally new experience for me which is you know i find i think it's fun yeah. i always love doing something new mm -hmm. but that's that's all my um okay so let's talk about her knit along a little bit yeah let's do it did you bring your yarn I did not. <gasps> we I were forgot. gonna we were gonna wind up your yarn skeins. Oh, now I'm really sad. <laughs> I forgot all about that. Dang it. Yeah, you're gonna have to oh. you have to do it by hand now. You know, you could put it on like the back of a chair. That's what I usually spins. do. I have these two IKEA bar stools. Okay. They're like the perfect height. That's perfect. Well, not perfect, <laughs> but it's it better. Spin. <laughs> they don't. But yeah. I'll but just, you can just, like, just pull it off. Don't worry, guys. I'll eat more that day. I'll have the energy. You'll be good. And everyone's worried about that. Are you one of those people? Like, I, I, different people have told me that winding their ball of yarn, they find relaxing and they love it. I'm like, I hate no, it. No, I'm just like, oh, let's get on yeah, with this. This is not the part that I want to do. <laughs> yeah, I just want to get knitting. Yeah, I have had a few. So I had one. Um, I have the Swift from Knit Picks that I got mm -hmm. on um, online, but then I also got the Knit Picks Ball Wander a few years ago because mm -hmm. it's they're some of the most reasonably priced, you know. Mm -hmm. But the Knit Picks Ball Wander, it's like a purple and white. I want to say I don't know if it's because of where I um, screw it on to my table, but mm -hmm. that thing I had so much trouble with the Ball really? Wander part. So for part of my anniversary present this year, my husband got me a ball winder and it's still, um, it was still only like $30, I think, which is still an investment, but um, it was not, you know, some of the wooden ones are mm -hmm. over $100. Yeah, it was really pretty. <laughs> but um, this one is so much smoother. Nice. And it works really, really well. So I like that. Nice. <laughs> I'm sorry, you forgot your yarn. Uh, no, I'm Thanks. sorry, I'm the sorry one. So what else do you want to say about the knit along? Um, so we have very generously had a few people that have um, offered to add prizes to the knit along. So um, Elaja from Horse Feather Fiber Arts is going to make some a stitch marker set with a B in it, Cute. which I love. My I ordered some from her, and I forgot to bring it over here <laughs> to show it. But um, I love her stitch markers. I do too, they're pretty. Yes. I haven't gotten any yet, but all the ones I've seen are gorgeous. I assume you have to use stitch markers in this pattern, and I am going to use the B1 from yeah. Elijah from Horse Feather. I'm sure you do. Fiber Arts. Yeah. yeah, I think it'll be perfect. To, yeah. Um, and um, also, we have some other we have some other prizes, but I'm gonna wait until they get here so we can show them mm -hmm. that are coming. So some very generous. Um, very generous people that are going to yeah, it's Jessica going to and Donald and um, so y'all are going to be very excited. You're definitely going to want to join this knit along. For sure, for <laughs> sure. And who's Woolen Twine? Is that who you got your yarn from? Yes. I was watching her podcast um, and she had knit the Humla Bee and she had omitted the Pico Edge. And I am seriously thinking yeah. about that. Not because I'm I am lazy, but not because <laughs> I'm lazy as far as that's concerned. Just because I like the smoother yeah. sides. So that's something that I think I might do. Yeah. But if you guys check out her podcast, it's a really nice podcast. She shows how she did it on her on one of her episodes, right? She shows the shawl. She, she shows the shawl. She shows just the the clean line edge. Um, in Will and Twine's podcast, when she showed her Humla Bee, um, she talked about how she made hers bigger. And then in the pattern, Lerica shows how you can make hers bigger by adding sections of 10 um, yes. to it. And so that's something that you need to consider in the beginning because yeah. you're going to cast on at the biggest part of the shawl and then you get smaller. So um, you have to think of that. I don't think I've done a shawl before. I'm trying to remember. Maybe I have. Where you decrease. <laughs> Sorry, guys. They're having a good time. I promise we gave them forks. Some scissors, <laughs> they're running. Oh my God. I don't know if I've ever done a shawl before where you start with the. I have not. You know, and then you decrease instead of increase. 
No. So I haven't. I've started like at the at, you know the tip, yeah. and then you get bigger, or the garter mm -hmm. tab cast on, and you get bigger that way. But yeah. I mean, I'm not sure. You know, I really do hate casting on, <laughs> but too. at the same time, the fact that that's just gonna get smaller yes. and smaller is kind of a nice yeah. thing. And the fact that the bees are <laughs> all the little intricate work is at the very beginning when you kind of got yes. more steam in your engine and then it gets just kind of it's like mindless towards the end when it gets smaller I think it's gonna be fun in it so I think I'm gonna do the Pico edge and she's I probably gonna do not, the, yeah. the straight yeah the mm -hmm. plain and that's the nice thing about knitting is that you can kind of customize mm -hmm. your right garment or object to be what you want mm -hmm. um, we're gonna be doing different colors mm -hmm. and also you know maybe we can all share tips in, right. in the comments I started I don't know if I did it right I, I did on Ravelry a group mm -hmm. for the Young Vote Knits podcast and I think there's a thread on there right if I did it right you did <laughs> for I, I figured okay. out how to join it <laughs> okay <laughs> good for the um for the knit along and then of course um we can post pictures on Instagram mm -hmm. with the hashtag bees are friends cow mm -hmm. and you know different tips or tricks that you right. all find that work working good for your yeah. projects you can share i one thing that i like to do when i'm casting on a very large number of stitches because you know you have to sit there especially when you have kids and you're trying to count all the mm -hmm. stitches <laughs> you better help their right. sleep i like to put stitch markers every uh, you know whatever works for you sometimes i do every hundred sometimes i do every 50 and that way That's a good you tip. know that you have cast on so if you want to cast you know if you put your stitch markers however many stitches you mm -hmm. want to then you know you mm -hmm. only have to count back From to your that last point. yeah that's stitch smart marker. i did that with my like when i did the button bands because you have almost 400 <laughs> stitches that's smart on the button band of my striat and so i've got stitch markers mm -hmm. um for different sections and that way i knew you know i didn't have yeah. to go back and count so i think that's really helpful when you're casting on i think that's a large a smart number. thing I will, I will definitely do that <laughs> And we'd love to yeah. see what everyone's doing. You know, send send us yes. pictures, tag us in the in the photos. Mm -hmm. Which I'll check yes. the hashtag too. But yeah, but tag us. We want to see what you're doing. So I, I think we might even have three prizes, right? Yeah. Instead of two, so def. I mean, you have a high chance of <laughs> winning an awesome <laughs> right, prize. Not gonna be, there's not going to be thousands of yeah. entries. Not even. I don't even know if we'll even make it to a hundred yeah. entries. So that's a very good chance. Yes, so we really hope you can uh -huh. join us. Um, we're really excited because we we love bees and we like knitting. this. We really love this shawl <laughs> and we, we like knitting. <laughs> Did you guys know that? <laughs> like knitting. Yeah. Speaking of podcasts, we were talking about Will and Twine's podcast. I wanted to mention a couple of podcasts that I've been mm -hmm. watching that I really really like. Um, that that aren't like you probably you may have heard of them before but they're not like 35,000 yeah. subscribers or anything um I really love I found recently is Skeins of Dreams her name is Miga I mm -hmm. love her podcast on her <laughs> she has the sweetest voice like I want her to read me bedtime stories <laughs> I feel like so relaxed but it's not like it's not it's not soothing to the point where I'm just like this is boring but it's yeah. just kind of like all my cares have melted yes. away <laughs> when she starts talking so I really love her um, and then I like, um, what's not the one that was, 108 Stitches. Oh, I haven't, I haven't seen that one. It's, she's really sweet. She has a great um, color palette. I love the things that she yeah. knits. I like her choices, her yarn colors. And then um, the last one I wanted to mention was Edible Thoughts Makes on, um, on YouTube. And she, I think that's her same tag on Instagram. But she has, she makes the most colorful socks and sweaters for her little girls. And it's things that I wouldn't particularly choose, but they make me so happy looking at her, her colors that I just like, yeah, you just like to watch her do it. it. Yeah. It's like she's, she paints with colors and they're like yeah. cheerful colors generally. And I really like it. I like her whole aesthetic. Speaking of podcasts, me and Becky were super excited because <laughs> Potter and Bloom, which we both like, um, she talked about us on one of her she episodes. She said our names. And we were like, she said our names. <laughs> we were texting her, she said our names. <laughs> <laughs> like sending the video back and forth. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, so yeah, you'll have to check her out too. But we were, yeah. su we were super excited. <laughs> we were, it made our year. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, there's just so many good podcasts. 
There I are. Love, uh, there are. I've been watching Brooke Willow. Do you watch yes, her? Yes, I, I love her. Yeah. I cry. And she does. Um, I love it when she like rides her bike yeah. places, and you see her get off her bike with her knitting in yes. the basket. I just <laughs> love all that. I do. Um, and she is making this um, this coat carpet coat that she um, is from K Facet. And so I I really liked it. Not like I can do it anytime soon, but I got on thrift books and I had to order that book from the 80s. Uh -huh. The one where, you know, the K yeah. Facet book and it has that coat in it. I sent you those pictures. Yeah. It's worth buying the book just to look at it. It's all, there's some <laughs> awesome 80s fashion in that. Oh, yeah. But I actually love that sweater. Yeah. It's, it's cool. in Tarzan knitting and everything. And hers looks really pretty. Um, and it makes me want to knit one someday. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I had to get that book too. But yeah, there's just so many podcasts, so that's a good idea. We'll have to talk about Mention some more ones that we like, we like to watch. next yeah. time too. But thank you guys so much for joining us. I also want to say, uh, so last time we talked, I had lost some family members, <laughs> Johnny Cash and Kenny Rogers. You know, it was just a devastating week. <laughs> We had another attack and lost more chickens. I was just so depressed because my animals kept dying. And anyway, there was, there's a, a viewer, the sweetest, oh my goodness, the sweetest viewer. Her name's Mira, if I'm saying that correctly. She sent me a pattern on Ravelry, the arrow leaf socks. And she Aww. said to cheer me up. That, and that so made me sweet. cry. <laughs> she That's said, so oh, sweet. Sweet. thank you. So that was, I thought that was really sweet. Very. Um, but we've got eight pins left. And so, and then we had another, I think it was maybe a coyote came during the day out of the woods and, and was biting one of our hens and we came, you know, we scared it off and it's still alive, but it, we have nursed it back to health. <laughs> I think she even laid an egg, so maybe she's going to survive. But um, it's just, you know, you want to let them free range because the whole point in having chickens to me, I don't want to keep, not that there's anything wrong with it. Some places you have to. Yeah. But I didn't want to get chickens and just have them live in, the, in a cage all mm -hmm. the time. It makes me happy to see them, you know, free ranging during the day. We don't let them at night. Of course, they're safe in a coop. But all of this is happening during the day, and we live... Mm -hmm in the country <laughs> and there's a lot of animals so sometimes they get eaten but I'm definitely gonna have to get a new rooster mm -hmm. <laughs> um you probably need a dog yeah like a dog that you raise it with a as a puppy mm -hmm. with the chicken I think so too we were looking at different kinds like great Pyrenees and um Australian Shepherds because mm -hmm. we have a Labrador that lives in our house but he wants to eat the chickens too right. so you need to put them with them with our pup. Yeah. Yeah. You need to help me. <laughs> help me find a good dog. <laughs> Protect our chickens. Um, also, you, have you ever heard that old wives tale before? About the persimmons. Where, you know, persimmons have different shaped seeds. Uh -huh. And whatever the shaped seeds, the persimmons are either a spoon, a fork, or a knife. Okay. Like different shaped seeds. Then it's different shaped because of... Um, the weather and uh -huh. the kind of winter that you're gonna have. Uh -huh. <laughs> have you heard this before? Yeah. So apparently, I so I went out to our persimmon tree and I cut a persimmon open, and it had the spoon shape. What does so that mean? That means you're gonna be shoveling snow all winter. No. <laughs> so we will see. We'll I, see if it's accurate. I love snow because it's it's beautiful. The, the yeah. when all the snow falls and like the sound, like mm -hmm. is cushioned by the mm -hmm. snow, so it's quiet. I love that. But then I immediately go to, I am going to have so yeah. much laundry because yes. they go outside and they get wet and they come back in. And we both have indoor dogs. And they want to go back outside. I'm talking about my kids. Oh, I know. But I mean, it's like not even just your kids. It's <laughs> your husband, <laughs> your dog. No. Um, yeah. But I mean, it's like 70 degrees today and it's yeah. almost mid-December. So, right. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. For shoveling snow. <laughs> um, yes. <laughs> anyway, I think that is pretty much everything yeah, for today. So. I'm sure we forgot something, but I forgot my yarn <laughs> to wine. That's what I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, and it'll probably start before you yeah. come back the knit along. We're gonna try to knock our shawls out pretty quickly. I am. I'm gonna try to focus. I'm gonna 
definitely try to get that sweater done before. I mean, I, I don't. It's gonna take very little time. Yeah, it's bulky. But um, even if I'm not done, I'm just gonna focus on my shawl. Yeah, we're gonna we're wanting to get that knocked out of the way so we can kind of show you guys mm -hmm. what they look like and um, fashion know. show. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And if there's any, you know, anything that we ran into, because we haven't hit the pattern yet, so mm -hmm. we don't really know, you know, anything we might run into with it. No, but there's a couple of good videos to watch, before, which I've watched them already, on how to do the Pico cast yeah. on, if that's what you want to do. Um, a video for the bees, mm -hmm. and so I'm going to make a little bee swatch and practice my bees, because she talks about how um, you don't want to pull it too tight, you don't pull it too loose to make those little wings, so I'm going to do a little practice. Because Becky is very... <laughs> She's a planner and she's a <laughs> practicer, and I'm not. I just like dive right into it. <laughs> then I have to redo it. <laughs> so you practice and tell me I will <laughs> what I need slide. to do. <laughs> um, I think that's pretty much pretty much it though. Yeah, I think it is. Um, maybe I may, I may get another lonely podcast in by myself before the yeah. new long starts, but you should. Um, but if not, we'll definitely get one going pretty soon after it starts hopefully but thank thank you all so much for watching and if you're new i hope that you enjoyed it and if you did it would be awesome if you could subscribe it would really help the channel and um, if you're returning that means so much to me so thank you very very much and thank you becky for <laughs> being back with me Thanks today for having me thank you guys for watching and happy knitting bye-bye